Hey, hey everyone! Welcome to Got the Fire, where we focus on people who are doing interesting, cool things in Indianapolis, for Indianapolis, and whose scope and impact is way beyond Indianapolis. And I'm terrifically happy, I've never used that word before, but I'm terrifically happy to welcome Matthew Feltrop, the first executive director of the Patachi Foundation. Thank you. Matthew, please be so welcome. Thank you, I feel welcome. Excellent. And today we're gonna to talk you know, about a difficult subject and, and one that you dedicate your life to. It's the, the issue of childhood hunger. I mean, there are people in Indianapolis who have no clue that there are so many children that are facing food insecurity. They don't know where their next meal is coming from. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit, Matthew, about uh, the Patichu Foundation. You're the executive director. Mm -hmm. You know, what is it? Give us the stats. So the Patichu Foundation started in 2013, and I think most people might know the Patichu restaurants, and um, the Patichu brand has been around since 1989. Uh, but in 2013, Martha Hoover started the Patichu Foundation with a really simple goal, which was to fight childhood hunger by serving wholesome meals to kids and teaching them about um, the exciting things that food can offer. Um, connecting them to the food that they're eating. So the Padishu Foundation since then has served over 150,000 meals that we've created from scratch. And uh, we built this space just this year to have our own dedicated production and teaching kitchen to be able to make more food and serve more children and then also bring children here and work on culinary skills with them in our kitchen. So the thrust behind our work is meeting the immediate need that kids have to not go to bed hungry. They're getting breakfast and lunch at school, uh, but we are serving a meal to fill this gap at the end of the day. We're serving a scratch made meal that they're getting after school. And we couldn't do it without the help of volunteers, our um, culinary team, and it's a really amazing community effort that's taken place. I've been proud of it uh, for a long time, just sort of like as a passive consumer mm -hmm. uh, going to Public Greens and knowing that a portion of that um, revenue or profit is, is, is helping to fund this effort. So tell me, I think a, a, lot, of, a lot of the people that are watching either in Indianapolis or, or beyond mm -hmm. are, are perhaps wondering, what is the extent of childhood hunger in, in Indianapolis? Yeah, Indianapolis actually has a huge uh, crisis when it comes to childhood hunger. One in five kids are facing food insecurity, which is kind of a technical term for hunger. And it really just means that um, it's a person who doesn't know where their next meal will come from or when it will come. And um, I, know, I think we can all imagine what it feels like to be hungry, but to have that insecurity of knowing where your food is coming from uh, creates a lot of challenges in your life. And uh, when it's a kid, one in five kids in our city, that's completely unacceptable. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 I was thinking this morning, it's jolting. I mean, that's 20% of the children in this city. And, and we don't even hear about this. It isn't any politician's talking point. You know, we don't have any, any important people going around talking about this and other than, I mean, I know there are other efforts, mm -hmm. but other than Tonic Ball, you know, and what you all are doing, you don't hear about this. So it's sort of an invisible... It uh, definitely is, and I think especially when it comes to kids, because hunger doesn't just affect kids today. It's not that they're just missing a meal tonight. It's what effect does that have on their life? What, how, how are they being able to perform in school if they're hungry? Um, how does that affect their health outcomes and what kind of food are they getting access to? Um, which brings in a whole other question about food access and, and I think the topic of food deserts is something that's really uh, come into vogue to talk about. Um, and it's an overlapping issue and challenge that we have in Indianapolis. And um, if you don't know where your next meal is coming from and around you, you don't have healthy options, it's really hard to get a, a meal on the table that can fuel your life. I mean, I'm assuming, um, and from the little bit of briefing that, that we had, that it's rooted in, in poverty. Absolutely, hunger is a symptom of poverty. It's a symptom of poverty, and let's talk about the child. I mean, I have an eight-year-old son, right? What does 
being hungry, not knowing where your next meal is coming from, what does that do to a kid? Yeah, it has um, tremendous lifelong effects. Um, almost 30% of uh, children in Indianapolis are living in poverty. One in five kids is uh, food insecure. And um, on top of that, about 35% of kids in Indianapolis are overweight and obese. And all of these overlap. If you look at a Venn diagram, the population that's both living in poverty and food insecure is also um, a lot of times overweight. And so hunger looks differently because the food that might be available is cheap. And cheap food is normally high in calories, but low in nutritional value. And so the Pottery Foundation has a real opportunity because we're able to create a really kid-friendly meal by a chef that has high nutritional value and provide it to a kid. And, and it's something that they can count on. So that's providing them food security but we also know that it's providing them the nutrients that they need to, to go on. And they're learning about food at the same time. Yeah, so at the same time we do these, uh, we serve 2,000 meals a week almost. And um, the reality is that uh, just serving a meal isn't enough because we want kids to take something from that table, the lesson. And so we created a, an education program that we do with students. It's a hands-on cooking uh, focused curriculum that students participate in. Uh, normally it's before the meal and so they're learning about topics around exploring new tastes, uh, why food can be uh, fun and interesting and something that they should be excited to try. And then they also learn about where food comes from. So we talk about that uh, food is from the earth and it's important to take care of our planet because that's how we're getting our, our food. And the reality is that if kids are getting a meal at school that might be wrapped in cellophane, um, they're not necessarily seeing the correlation with where food is coming from. And so to be able to teach them that um, food is from the earth, there's a real connection that happens when it comes to food and food can be a really powerful instrument. And I'm assuming that there's uh, embedded messaging about the fact that unlike the media dominated messaging about sugar, mm. that there's this whole spectrum of food that is doing other things for you and tastes perhaps better. I think it's better, but. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting. The, the work that we do um, is so powerful because food is an equalizing tool and we can invite more people to share, to share our table with us. And that is uh, both empowering to a student and also allows us to um, widen our community and, and be a part of the community at large. So, so Matthew, how did, this is such a powerful um, subject. I'm, I'm, I'm moved just talking about it. You know, we do this thing to shine our light on the great work that other people are doing. And this is magnificent what you all are doing here. I'm, well, thank I'm, you. Thank you for doing this. How did you get personally involved with all of this? So. I grew up in a single parent household and I um, remember a time in our lives when it was really difficult for my mom to get food on the table and I feel like I lived a really privileged life but uh, for that time in our lives she was running from one job to a neck another one and she would drop us off at home and run through the drive through and um, that's all we had to eat for dinner and so um, we didn't really share a dinner time experience the nutritional quality of the food wasn't that great. And it wasn't until my mom was able to get a job that she didn't have to go to another job in the evening uh, that we were able to kind of break that cycle. And so, um, you know, food and, and sharing a meal is actually a leading indicator in a, a child's success. And um, that's why it's so important to, to sit down at the dinner table because we learn a lot of things about life there. and. What we're able to do is not just serve a meal to meet this immediate need, but also have a dinner time conversation and talk about life and troubles and homework. And uh, that's really what food is all about. It's about sharing. And that's kind of uh, the authentic power of what we're able to do through food. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's really amazing. What can the uh, the people on the other side of that uh, we know you're there. Yeah. Um, what can they do uh, either to get involved um, um, with your work 
or to support the, the Padachu Foundation or, or just to address this matter on your own? I'm sorry, that's a big question. That's a big what, question. What can they do? So I would encourage everyone to go on to our website, the thepodishufoundation.org, and to um, sign up to volunteer. We need people. We couldn't do this without the hundreds of volunteers that we have on our roster to sit down and share that meal with kids. Um, the majority of our funding comes from individuals and, and uh, businesses who are partnered with us, and we would love for other people to get involved. I mean, what really makes this work possible is a whole lot of people giving five, 10, 15, $25 a month. And so um, there's a lot of ways to get involved, but starting at our website's probably the best way. Thank you so much for what you do, Matthew. You, uh, your your uh, great sensitivity in this matter and your willingness to share yourself uh, means a lot to us. Thank you to your organization and to Martha and her vision. Uh, Back to you. Thank you for watching. Got the fire! Can yes. You do it? Got the fire! Got the fire!